When Father Matt entered the church that morning, he did not know that he would become the protagonist of a shocking video that would soon turn the congregation against him, and since he did not know that a camera was filming him, he did something incredible to the young girl who was praying alone in his church, it was inevitable that Amelia and Matt's paths would cross. The new priest had little reason to approach the young girl who often came to the church to pray. But the villagers often talked about her, and after a while, he felt as if he had known her all his life. She was an orphan young girl raised in a nearby convent. After completing her studies, everyone expected her to dedicate her life to the convent, but Amelia made an unexpected departure from her planned destiny. Although she remained very close to and involved in the ministry, she needed the freedom of a life outside the church. Very few people approached Amelia or understood what was going on in her mind, despite her extroverted personality, she also had a different side, her favorite time of day was the early morning hours when she spent time alone in the church, depending on the season, she planned her time alone with God so that she could bask in the first rays of sunlight through the church windows, there, she found peace and strength to face the coming day with joy and vitality. She never missed a day of this devotional time alone. Father Matt had learned to know Amelia from a distance during his first year in the village. He would never disturb her alone time, but without her knowing, he sometimes watched her with a sense of awe. She clearly had a very special spiritual relationship with the Lord, and he almost envied the peace that emanated from her being. One such morning, Father Matt was standing at the back of the church when he saw Amelia doing something completely unusual. One moment she was still sitting in the front pew, and the next moment she had disappeared. Matt did not know what to do, perhaps she had had a fainting spell, he thought, he was embarrassed to be watching her from afar, but at the same time, he was glad to be there at this strange moment, if she needed help, he would provide it immediately. His heart was pounding in his chest when he stealthily moved toward the front of the church, Father Matt was shocked by what he saw, Amelia was lying on the soft carpet, her eyes closed, her breathing peaceful, while the light from the windows played with intricate patterns on her face. She almost looked like an angel, Matt did not know what was happening to him, but without thinking. It was the first time in a year that he wasn't overanalyzing his life and his responsibilities towards the parish, Matt had always felt the call to ministry, even if he hadn't understood that God was calling him before his adolescence, even as a child, whenever he could slip into an empty church building, he was in his happy place in the silence, he always felt he could hear most clearly there, then one day, Matt felt the call to become a priest after completing his studies. Dedicating his early years as a priest to missionary work, and even spending some time in Rome, Matt was ready to be sent out into the vast world, without hesitation, he indicated that he would go wherever the Lord wanted him to go, with great anticipation and excitement, Matt boarded the plane that would take him to his first parish, his parents said a sad goodbye, but he embraced this new chapter of his life with joy and enthusiasm, however. The initial reception in this small village was lukewarm, Matt had never anticipated struggling so much to adapt to a new culture and a completely different way of doing things, he was expected to lead a community with strong convictions and clear ideas about how he wanted things to be, Matt knew in his heart that he was sent to introduce a new way of worshipping and growing in faith, but he had never thought it would be so difficult. He knew he had to take small steps in his mission to bring about change, most of the parishioners were elderly, while Matt was on a mission to bring young people back to the church, the church needed to become much more than a Sunday mass service, a life of faith required a lifestyle change where God was incorporated into daily life, initially, there was much resistance from the older people when Father Matt started a football club. They found it completely inappropriate for a priest to dress in ordinary clothes, let alone sportswear, and mingle with the world as if you were not a man set apart from the world to serve the Lord. It was only when they saw young children beginning to join the services that they saw some method in the madness, but due to their own pride, they were not ready to admit their mistakes, despite seeing the positive change, Matt had to push his own limits regarding personal interaction. He was not comfortable in social situations, his strength lay in preparing sermons, he enjoyed spending time alone studying the word and drawing conclusions. He would often go for walks in the forest while everyone else was asleep, where he gained clarity on the message he would deliver on Sunday. Although a small percentage of resistance to this foreign priest remained in the congregation, very few could argue that his messages were not revelatory. Despite not having a very charismatic personality, his sermons were deeply profound and comforting, 
it was as if a different person took the pulpit during Sunday services, leaving behind the shy parishioner who essentially preferred to be alone with the Lord and his thoughts, yet many older members of the community found countless reasons to criticize the new priest. When one of them entered the church that morning and saw Father Matt lying on the floor next to Amelia, the delicate peace he had established in the village over the past year shattered. Neither Amelia nor Matt had noticed the woman at first. Amelia did not move, although the priest could hear her breathing. Despite the somewhat awkward situation, Matt could not help but face the reality. Never in a million years had he thought he would fall asleep. He had been dreaming of a heavenly garden where all the animals coexisted in peace with the most beautiful harp and flute music playing in his dream world. But then a sudden noise woke him up, unknowingly. Father Matt must have reached out to Amelia during his dream, and the two found themselves hand in hand on the floor. The woman caught them in this inappropriate and compromising position. Gloria was one of those who systematically tried to find something negative to report about Father Matt. She was thrilled by the sight but at the same time could not believe her luck. She was just sorry she had not caught them kissing but it was a story she would immediately start spreading everywhere. According to her, there was an affair between the two young lovebirds. Their young priest had chosen a different life. He had broken his vow and was to be severely punished. Although some people wanted to give Father Matt the benefit of the doubt, the village businesses preferred to believe the worst and immediately reported his behavior to another man of faith. The parishioner from the neighboring village was a respected man and was summoned to investigate the inappropriate behavior of their young priest. No one gave Amelia or Father Matt a chance to explain. It was only when Father Anthony arrived and questioned both individuals, first separately, then together, that he was convinced of what had transpired earlier that day in the church. To resolve the situation, a meeting was called for late afternoon, and the entire parish was required to attend. Now the poison had spread throughout the town, and even some people who were not part of the church wanted to attend the meeting. The two sides took their places in the church according to which side of the story they believed. To the left were those convinced that Father Matt was a predator who had taken advantage of poor Amelia, to the right were those who liked Father Matt and believed there was an innocent explanation for the situation, after all, there was only one eyewitness, known for her prejudices and malicious intentions, but when her account was questioned, Gloria revealed that she had an ace up her sleeve, that day, after finding the priest and the girl lying on the church floor. She had hidden behind a column to film the shocking encounter, she had not been able to record them while they were lying down, but she had managed to capture the moment when Father Matt helped Amelia to her feet and guided her towards the vicar's house. She showed the recording to the congregation, and many murmured in outrage at the sight of the priest leading the young girl into another room before closing the door. Father Matt hung his head in shame. He had already explained to Father Anthony that he had only invited Amelia to his office to discuss her unwavering faith and to thank her for the incredible experience she had given him that morning, but now he could see how his actions could be misinterpreted. Next to him, Amelia blushed as she watched the video. She had worn a short floral dress that morning, and the idea that her own parishioners might believe she had dressed that way to seduce the priest was overwhelming. When Father Anthony cleared his throat, a complete silence fell over the congregation. Gloria retrieved her phone and cast a satisfied glance at Father Matt, the atmosphere in the room was tense, and then Father Anthony said, What happened today is nothing short of tragic, it's a sad day when we become so distrustful of our fellow beings that we draw conclusions based on mere observations, fortunately. This matter may be closed today as material evidence of what transpired that day has been revealed, Father Matt and Amelia looked at him with confusion, what material evidence? They wondered if someone else had recorded them behind their backs. Father Anthony then took out his own phone, and another video began to play on the device. A camera that had been installed inside the vicar's house for security reasons had recorded Father Matt and Amelia entering the room, sitting at the priest's desk. And having a pleasant conversation, their meeting had ended with a firm handshake, and Amelia had left the vicar's house with a sweet smile on her lips. Father Matt was shocked. He didn't know there was a camera inside the vicar's house, his predecessor must have forgotten to tell him, but despite not knowing he was being recorded, he had still behaved honorably and properly, showing only complete respect to Amelia, Gloria and many others who had accused him were now red with shame. Father Antony smiled at Matt and then turned back to the congregation with a frown, the lesson we all need to learn is not to jump to conclusions so easily about Gloria. It goes without saying that you owe both Father Matt and Amelia a profound apology. 
I hope that everyone who participated in these rumors and contributed to spreading this malicious gossip is here today because you are also guilty. I am pleased to say that this matter is now closed. Except for those who need to settle it with Father Matt and Amelia, several parishioners immediately stood up and offered their deep apologies to the priest and the young girl they had unjustly accused. Amelia was still bitter about the entire ordeal, but Father Matt simply smiled at the congregation and forgave everyone. Yes, he had been looking for ways to send her away for months, but in this case, he was also trying to protect one of their own. Attempting to protect Amelia in their twisted way, for that, he did not hold it against them. He did not hold it against any of them, not even Gloria. After watching the first story above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. Now, let's watch another similar story. When a priest reviewed suspicious images with his superior, he was surprised to discover that a camera had been monitoring his every move inside the church. But the truth about what he had been doing with a young nun shocked everyone. Father David could barely remember when he had last felt so sad. He had devoted his life to the parish and his faith, but what had happened to this respected institution had left a permanent stain on the image of his faith and the priesthood. The small town where he had spent his last years guiding and loving had become the target of burglaries and thefts, which had even spared the church. When he discovered that the criminals had stolen all the offerings from the rectory, Father David decided to install several security cameras on the premises. He wanted to protect the money that would be given to the less fortunate in the community as well as to safeguard the nuns and priests who lived and worked in the church. Fortunately, Father David knew a man named Frank who worked for a security company. Frank did meticulous and discreet work. And Father David finally felt safe in the house of the Lord. However, he decided not to inform his fellow priests and nuns about the cameras inside the church, and only shared that he had installed a device in the rectory to monitor their affairs. He did not want them to feel watched while they prayed or found comfort in the presence of the Lord, and since the footage would only be reviewed in the event of a new burglary, he thought it was unnecessary to mention that there were cameras. They all seemed to learn the news among the most grateful was a young priest named Mary. Father David tried not to show favoritism, but from the moment the two men met, he felt a particular affection for the young man. Perhaps it was because he saw so much of himself in Mary, his blend of eternal optimism with an untamed spirit was a profile difficult to shape into that of a priest, but he could see that the boy was eager to learn and serve the community, and perhaps one day he would. Father David had spent his whole life in this parish and had sworn to stay there until the day of his death. But his strength was waning, and he knew he needed to train someone to replace him, the congregation needed new blood and even the old priest realized that the younger generation needed a new approach to faith, the struggle between a life of faith and the pleasures of the world had never been as real as it was at that time, and at that moment, Mary seemed like the perfect candidate to replace him and bring the change that their congregation needed. Mary's arrival coincided with the arrival of a group of new nuns, among them was a beautiful girl named Diana, Father David felt a strong need to protect this girl, even before knowing anything about her background, it took some time for Diana to establish a certain trust, but eventually, she confided in him, behind her bright eyes and shy smile was a girl who had grown up in a violent home. Her father was a harsh man who understood very little about his role in his marriage and his children's lives. The atmosphere at home was characterized by anger directed at anyone who crossed his path. Diana's mother bore the brunt of his anger until one day she packed her bags and simply disappeared. With her mother gone, Diana became the target of her father's rage. Although she was supposed to be a carefree young girl, she had to take care of the house and look after her younger siblings. But when her father stopped coming home from work, a group of social workers knocked on their door and placed her and her siblings into foster care. Given the significant gap between them, she ended up leaving the system before her siblings. She was all alone, with no one to protect or guide her. Diana would have become a classic case of a rebellious teenager if it weren't for the timely intervention of a teacher named Miss Lizzie. This woman took her under her wing and invited her to church. Although her foster family did their best to meet the girl's physical needs, they were not equipped to handle her emotional world and broken heart. Miss Lizzie, on the other hand, was a haven of peace amid the world's storms. Miss Lizzie had never married and was quite devoted to her faith. Her love for the church and worship music planted the seed for Diana's decision to become a nun. She had very little trust in men but managed to build a relationship with her creator. 
Father David was the first man with whom Diana found any sort of fatherly figure, as this wise parishioner played a pivotal role in Mary's and Diana's lives. It was inevitable that these two young people would end up spending time together. Fortunately, Father David could keep a watchful eye on the young people and guide them in the principles of a life dedicated to God and God alone. The situation had blinded him to the truth. Perhaps his deep love for the two young people had led him to ignore the signs. Whatever the reason, it remained a huge shock when he was confronted with a truth he had probably hoped he would never have to face. The security company monitoring the camera footage at the church was owned by Frank. Frank and Father David had been longtime friends, and the preacher had very few people he could trust unconditionally. When Father David visited the Frank home, he and his wife Lillian allowed the man of faith to relax for a brief moment and just be a human being with vulnerability and deep emotions. When Frank called Father David that fateful morning, it was clear that there was distress in his voice. He needed to urgently meet with the respected parishioner, but he requested that they meet at the security company's office to review some footage together. Father David was surprised. There had been no recent burglaries, and everything seemed in order. But Frank insisted that what he had seen on the church's security footage was disturbing and could cause serious harm to the faith and the congregation. With fear and a heavy heart, Father David drove into town. He knew it must be serious if Frank couldn't discuss it over the phone. Deep down, he wondered if the cameras had captured the face of someone he cherished deeply, who was involved in some kind of sinister behavior. Father David knew that speculating wouldn't lead him anywhere. But he couldn't stop his mind from running through potential scenarios. Frank asked his dear friend to sit down and closed his office door. He even lowered the blinds to ensure that their conversation would be completely private. There, in the safety of his company, Frank warned Father David that what he was about to see would likely leave him devastated and upset. Frank had carefully compiled a single video containing clips of movements in the church's garden over a period of about two months. Although there was always a very small chance that the footage could be misinterpreted, there was little doubt about what had happened in the church when the priest was not watching. What was most troubling was that Father David had no idea of the situation. Had he been a bit more vigilant, he might have noticed the warning signs. And all of this could have been avoided, as Father David drove back to the parish. Tears streamed down his face, he felt a mix of emotions, on one hand, he felt responsible for what had happened, on the other, he felt betrayed, but there was also the strange emotion of relief that he could barely explain, had his subconscious always known, but had simply prevented him from confronting the truth, when Father David entered the church garden. Mary was standing near the door and signaled to him with a solemn expression, Father David told him to wait in the church office. Mary lowered his head and walked silently to the indicated place. It was the most difficult conversation Father David had ever had in his life. There was no doubt about what he had seen, but he still asked Mary if what the camera footage showed was the truth. With his head down, Mary admitted to having sinned, but before he could explain himself, Father David shouted at him to leave. He could not believe that his dear disciple had betrayed him in such a scandalous manner. The conditions for not expelling Mary from the church were clear. He had to leave immediately without saying goodbye to anyone, he would be transferred to a distant congregation and forbidden from ever contacting anyone from this parish again, Mary had no choice but to accept the conditions. He was devastated to lose his mentor and father figure forever. But he knew he had made a mistake and was ready to pay the price, Mary packed his bags and booked a hotel room in town for the night, Father David was heartbroken but it was not the time to think about how he felt. There was another person who had been caught up in all this mess, and he didn't know what to do about it. After much reflection, he decided to have a conversation with Sister Ella. She was responsible for the nuns in their parish and would know better than he how to handle the situation. The conversation with Sister Ella was difficult, but Father David left it to the nuns to deal with. When Diana woke up the next morning, she was summoned to Sister Ella's office and asked to explain why she and Mary had been sneaking out of the church at night several times a week instead of praying and studying as they were supposed to. They had also been seen entering her room together. Sister Ella explained that Mary had been sent away and that she was considering doing the same with her, but first she wanted the truth. Diana nearly fainted upon learning that Mary had left. She burst into tears, realizing that he had taken most of their punishment to protect their little secret and begged Sister Ella to reconsider, 
when she finally told the nun the whole truth, Sister Ella couldn't help but burst into laughter. The nun brought Father David into her office and had Diana recount her story once more. When Father David understood how severely he had been mistaken, he jumped into his car and rushed to the hotel where Mary was staying. The poor priest didn't deserve an ounce of the punishment he had received. What Diana had revealed did not match what he had suspected. It turned out that the two youngsters had indeed sneaked out at night, but to see musicians play live in a local bar, the band played heavy metal music, and somehow Diana had become passionate about this genre to the point of neglecting her prayers at night. The education she had received until then had convinced her that she was simply sinning by listening to this music, she had confided in Mary who had shown her that what she was doing was harmless by going with her to the bar. After their nightly outings, they would lock themselves in Diana's room to listen to more music, unaware that the cameras were monitoring their every move. Mary knew that their behavior did not warrant punishment but preferred to protect his friend's silence. Diana had already been betrayed by an important man in her life, and he did not want to be the second. Father David deeply apologized to him. The boy was gentle and caring exactly the kind of person he would like to see leading his parish one day, for now, he would work on distinguishing sinful behaviors from somewhat strange passions. The following night, Father David joined Mary and Diana at the bar, and the three of them sang together, after watching the stories above. Do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel. That all about today's stories, see you next time.